Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT. This is Curse of Strahd. And we are doing Lake Baratok and the Richtoven's Tower. Um, now in the last video, we did all of the walls and all of that stuff. And I was talking about the fact that there is a, uh, a puzzle lock on the main door. And I've been thinking about how to deal with that and how to set that up. And what I didn't want to do is put loads of tiles all over the place on top of um, of the map that we were doing. We've kind of done that before, but I thought because they're going to spend a little bit more time potentially trying to work this one out, I have created this as a separate scene. It's not a battle map. There's no grid on it. It's gridless. Um, no fog of war, no vision or anything like that. I've just got this image of the door here. I just wanted to show you how I've chosen to deal with this. So the idea of this puzzle, if you ignore the uh, the little uh, looky looky uh, things here, the little my little icons, the idea is is that they're presented with this and they have to connect these symbols in the correct order. Now, unfortunately, it um, the the spell symbols, so the magic symbols we've got, the coloured ones don't match with the original modules or rather this image from um, from the module they don't match with that but that's okay because I'm going to get around that just through role play but the idea is is that they need to match it now they find this ring this ring is an item that they have um, and you can see that this has got a pattern marked on it that tells them how to solve this puzzle once they make that link so uh, the idea is they can start either if you're looking at the image on the right here, they can start at one and follow that pattern all the way through. So they cover all of them and end at the other one. But it can go in either direction. It doesn't matter. So essentially that is starting here, going there to there, up to there, to there, to there, to there, to there, and then back over to here. Or they can go the other way around. Um, it really doesn't matter how they how, which direction they choose to go. That's absolutely fine. So that's the puzzle that they need to solve. Now, they're going to get that ring and everything else. And I thought, mm hmm, are they going to realize the pattern of that ring? So I thought what would be only fair is I've added into the party journal. It's hidden at the moment, but I will reveal that. When they get uh, Kazan's ring, uh, this will be revealed to them so that they can go, oh, yeah, we've got the ring. And then if they're paying attention, they'll realize that they've got their symbols on here. They go off to the um, to the mansion to try and do some research on it, which is how they find out about the tower in the first place. So they've got this image to refer to. And when they get to here, hopefully they will recognize that this image and that image are the same as what's on there. And they need to work that out. Um, so I've just decided that they're going to have this image of the door that is shut and they're going to have to try and solve that puzzle. Now you'll notice I've got a nice little handy reset button over here which does things and I really I really really did not want to do that. <laughs> just nearly killed my whole party. Shouldn't have clicked that. <laughs> Let me just put everybody back onto their full health. Bearing in mind this is my live party so I need to make sure I'm not accidentally leaving them with effects and things he genuinely was on seven hit points after he got beaten up by the animated armor in the um, in the death house and everybody else was actually back on full at this point so we just got that one minor little graze injury left so i can remember that it's not a problem now i have put their tokens down here for a reason but they're all hidden so when the players are on here they're not going to see this reset button uh, and they're not going to see these icons. But the idea is is that they can come in and start pressing these icons. And when they do, oh look, they light up. So they can try to follow the pattern of that ring and move through how it's supposed to be done. Now, I thought about, oh yeah, well I could do a, a bit like with the multiple pressure plates where you've got to do them in the right order. And I thought I could do that. And then I thought I can't be bothered. Because I'm going to be watching them. I'm going to be right here. I know what the pattern should be. And in fact, in a moment, I'm going to make that even easier for me. Not for them. For me. Um, to make sure that they are following the right pattern. So these are going to glow as they get the right pattern. If they try to follow the wrong pattern, I'm just on hand to whack that button. All the lights go out. And I'm doing them damage. 
And why am I doing them damage? Um, because I want them to realise they need to solve this puzzle and not brute force it. Because if they realise that, oh right, if I do that one, that one, oh hang on a minute, it all gets reset. Ignore the, ignore the injury roll, I've just killed somebody. <laughs> um, it resets, they go, oh okay, but we know that one's first, so let's try that one, that one. It's like, oh no, that hasn't worked either. Excuse me, killing off the entire party like this. Um, they'll be higher level by the time they get here. They'll have a few more hit points. But I want them to realise that this is dangerous. So uh, I'm going to describe, as they make a mistake, I'm going to describe that there's this pulse of energy that bursts out, knocking them all back, and they all take damage. Because they're only going to do that once and go, oh, whoa, hang on a minute, let's stop. Now, I've got that as 1d6 damage. I might lower that to 1d4. Um because that's potentially a bit harsh. But like I say, they will be higher level. Um, not sure why I'm healing at the moment. I'm probably going to kill them again. So what did they do? How did they do this? Because that's what kind of what you're here for, isn't it? Now, each of these is just an individual tile. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. That I have put a JB to a um, magic signal uh, sigil on. So I've chosen the right one from the right school of magic, obviously. I've made them all the same size. And as far as triggers, I've said anyone clicks on it. And the action is, just show this tile. That's it. Nothing special at all. So you click on it, it shows it. So they're not going to be able to see that unless they actually click on it first. Um, and I'm just going to watch them do it. If they do it wrong, I'm going to whack my reset button and continue to kill most of the party. <laughs> So what does this reset button do? I mean, it's again, it's really, really simple. Now I have got this set up that Game Master only clicks it. So if they're clicking off screen over here, they're not going to accidentally whack it and do something silly. So only the DM can do it. And the actions are quite simple. I'm going to hide, just open that up. I'm going to hide every entity that is tagged with magic button. Okay, so I'm using tagger, magic button. I'm just going to hide it. And then I'm just using the plain um, Hurt Hill all player tokens. I am going to drop that to 1d4. Um, so minus 1d4 hit points is how that works. Yep, it doesn't take into account damage reduction or anything like that. They're not going to have anti-magic shield um, or any kind of protection from magic. So I can easily just say, hey, it hurts. Deal with it. <laughs> um, we don't need anything else. Uh, on top of that, excuse my phone going off. So nice and simple, easy to run, actually easy to set up uh, with very little drama, except the fact I've killed my entire party repeatedly down here, of course. Now, why have I got those tokens on there? Because when I hit that reset button, it will do that damage, as you saw, to all tokens. So if I don't have these tokens on the board, um, it won't damage them and I want to hurt them. <laughs> so I just have them on there hidden. They won't even realize that they're here, uh, which is just fine, thank you very much. Um, just make it, just, just healing all these up again. You were the one who was slightly injured because the wizard did accidentally end up in melee range um, after making a silly little mistake. Uh, hopefully they've learned from that. But yeah, all, all of these are hidden tokens, so they can't see themselves. They can only see the door with the puzzle and of course they can zoom in. Now another way to make this easy for myself of course is I can use things like the drawing tool and I can draw that pattern on of what they need to do. Um, so it's that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one and that one. So I apps absolutely can do that if I want to. Now I'm going to get rid of the text off of there because that's not what I want. I'm going to make those lines a lot thinner. Let's make maybe four um, and I potentially can make them red or something like that. Um, still got the letter on there. That annoys me. I've taken the text label out. I don't want text label. Uh, let's make that tiny and see if we can get rid of it. Oh, text opacity. There we go. Let's see if we can get rid of it that way. Um, what about if I make that two so it's nice and thin? 
Why? 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 Why have I got that A on there? I don't want that A on there. Text opacity is nothing. Um, font size is small. There is no text label. Puts it in there though, doesn't it? What a git. Um, information only. And it's like it needs to have something in that text box. And this it really annoys me, the fact it does that. Can I just put spaces in? I can put spaces in. So that's not the best drawing in the world. In fact, actually, that looks really unbalanced, doesn't it? But you see what I mean. You can just do something like that. And, of course, we can hide that. So the players can't see it. Um, so it's just there as a little reminder that I know which order they're supposed to be doing it in. Um, I might... I could make that a bit bigger if I wanted to, to actually cover the symbols themselves. However I wanted to do it, I can do that. I'm going to redraw that because that looks sodding horrible. <laughs> so from there to there. Hang on, I've got to get this the right, the correct way around from there to there to there to there to there to there. To there. Yeah, it, how strange that it does such a um, crossover at the bottom. It's like it's all, everything's weighted kind of to the bottom. There we go. So that text, a couple of spaces, and make it transparent. Those lines might even make them one thick. I'm going to make them red so they're easy for me to see. Do that. Hide it. Still got that. Now, how did I get rid of that last time? <laughs> it don't, don't want to go, does it? It does not want to go. There's no no fill. Maybe if I just put a dot in, it's still not even getting rid of the A at all. It was was it making information? Was that making information? That's the difference that helps get rid of it. Okay, so I can leave that on there make sure that's hidden yep good so it gives me that guide of what they need to do so they can start at this one and as long as they go in that order that's all fine so when they're doing this i'm just going to be poised to press that reset button every time they go wrong um that's it what i may do is just uh tweaking this slightly i might just move this i locked it unlock no unlock it i might just move this over this way a bit i'm going to bring that active tile with me There we go, so I can be a little bit more zoomed in and watching what they're doing as they're doing it. Uh, so that's how I thought I would handle the door. It's just, yeah, basically do this. Put it into another scene. They've got to work out what it is. They can click the buttons. They can see the things come up. Um, I could add sounds on as well every time they press a button. I haven't bothered because um, I'm expecting they're going to be doing quite a lot of squabbling over the top of it. <laughs> I hope they're doing a lot of squabbling over the top of it, trying to work it out. And of course, if they do work it out, then we're going to just simply move back to the scene here. And then this door, which is the door they're trying to get through, should be locked until such time as they manage to do that. And then it's a simply a right click to unlock that for them. So that's what I'm doing for this. Nice and easy. Um, and that's all I'm going to cover in this video is just that little little lock thing there, just to make it a bit interesting, something slightly different, a bit of a puzzle for them. Um, and in the next video, of course, we will look at what's actually in the tower, including putting the lift in um, and all of those kind of encounter bits. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Do appreciate it, of course, as always. Uh, once again, thank you to all of my, all of the members, uh, including those new ones who have joined us very recently. Very much appreciate your support. Um, leave likes, leave comments, do all the things, you know, <laughs> it'd be really good. And I will catch you all in the next one.